Good morning. This is Pastor Ronald Stevenson. Welcome you to another dynamic Sunday morning of worship here at Spring of Water Christian Assembly in Randolph. Uh, thank you for joining in. We certainly hope that you have been blessed with our messages. This morning, you're going to be hearing another dynamic message entitled Rise Up and Walk. I've been preaching a series basically to get you to move out of that place of complacency, that place where you are, each and every one of us. It's as if we have fallen because of this COVID-19 and the political unrest in our nation. And so God wants to get you up from there. Remember, I preached to you two weeks ago in a message entitled, Begin to Dream Again, followed last Sunday by the message, uh, It's Time to Rise Up From There. And so today, I want to take you a little bit further. I want to motivate you to move on with God. So today's message is entitled, Rise Up and Walk. Rise Up and Walk. God bless you. Enjoy the service that we will be presenting to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. I just want to welcome each and every one of you this morning. Members of Spring of Water Christian Assembly, welcome. Prayer Lifeline family, welcome. I thank God for you. I thank God for your commitment. Just want everyone to know that we have some 50, 60, at times 70 people on our prayer lifeline Monday through Friday from 8 until about 9.30. Nightly devotion, powerful praise and worship, devotions, and testimonies. Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Just want to mention the number for those of you who'd like to join us. We'd love to have you on. On our prayer lifeline, we have seen sign wonders and miracles. We started this prayer lifeline at the beginning of COVID-19. And we thank God, those who have called in for prayer who have been affected by COVID-19, we have not lost one. Amen. They have recovered. In the name of Jesus. And uh, the majority, the majority, the majority, I would say maybe about 95% to 99% have not been affected by COVID-19. We started it at the onset of COVID-19 when the state of Massachusetts declared an emergency. And we've been praying faithfully from that time each night. Monday through Friday and Saturday mornings at 7 a.m. as a prayer lifeline family. We have cried together. We have rejoiced together. We have prayed for one another. We have encouraged one another. And so we call it a prayer lifeline family. And I want to invite you to join us this Monday. I'd love to see you. We have people calling from all over the United States different parts of the world, the Caribbean, the Virgin Islands, Jamaica, Canada. Praise the name of the Lord. And we look forward to seeing you. Come and join us. We also thank God for our live stream family and our Facebook live family. And now we're on New England Christian Television Network. And we invite you also uh, to join us in our service today. Praise God. I want to say a special thanks to each one of you who have prayed for the ministry and have been supporting the ministry with your tithe and offerings. We still have a building. We still have a ministry. Ask that you continue to support us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, for the past two weeks, I've been preaching to you a series of messages 
with the goal, this common goal in mind, which is to motivate you to rise up from that place of defeat that you have been feeling, including myself. Amen. The COVID-19 came upon us. And I know that we all have felt somewhat that we have been brought down from the place where we were before the pandemic broke out in our nation. Like me, you have felt discouraged, you have felt despondent. You have uh, maybe even feel, felt depressed because of the social isolation. Some of you have lost loved ones and they have been buried and you didn't get a chance to, to, to visit them in the hospital or to be there for their funeral. And, and these feelings, they don't just come and go, they linger. And so that I can say without a doubt this morning so that some of you are still feeling sad and some of you are still shaken up by what has happened. Added to that, we have the post-election fallout where many of you no longer trust the government. And then for the pandemic, we have the vaccine that was quickly rushed and some of you uh, are struggling, trying to make the decision, should you take it or not? You want to live, but you don't know if you're going to be injecting death into your body. And so all these feelings are accumulating. And then there is sicknesses, the other sicknesses, even the common flu and those of you who are struggling with high blood pressure and with heart disease and with diabetes, all of this is, is coming down upon you. Then to add to that, some of you have lost your job. Not only do you have family losses, but you, you have lost your source of income. Maybe you had a parent who worked and provided for the family, a spouse. And now that person is no longer there and you are struggling. Some of you may not even have what to eat. The rent is backing up. You're watching the money that you have saved in your retirement or in your personal savings being depleted. And I want you to know that my heart goes out to you this morning. And that's why I've been preaching to you these series of messages. Started some two weeks ago with a message. And I preached it in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Message entitled begin to dream again because God doesn't want you to give up you can still follow your dreams like sister Tanisha the the person that I also spoke about in that message begin to dream again and then last week the Lord laid a message on my heart to share with you and if you need the link you can just contact us 781-986-8600 spring of water praise the Lord but I shared with you the message entitled rise up from there or it's time to rise up from there and I spoke to you about about Saul before he became the great apostle Paul 
He was at a place in his life where he was brought down. The Spirit of God knocked him down. Hallelujah. And there he met Jesus Christ on the Damascus Road. And when Christ came in, he humbled himself. He fell to the ground. And there he met the risen Savior and asked, What is it that, Lord, what is it you want me to do? He heard the voice of God. The call of God was made clear on his life. And by the power of God's Holy Spirit, he was picked up from that low place and went on to become the greatest apostle of all. He has written more books in the New Testament than anyone else. Praise the Lord. And today, inconsistent with me motivating you to, to rise up from where you are, I'd like to share with you a message today entitled, Rise Up and Walk. Rise Up and Walk. The scripture is found in Acts chapter 3, 1 through 9. And we're going to invite our first lady to come and to read that scripture for us. Acts chapter 3, 1 through 9. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, First Lady. Praise God. Praise the Lord. We thank God for his word because his word is full of life. His word is full of hope. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 3, 1 through 9. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried from which, uh, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms? And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have given, I, I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Hallelujah. And he leaping and leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising the Lord. Amen. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Can we praise God? Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We thank you. Thank we you praise Jesus. you, Lord, Hallelujah. for the great and mighty things Bless that your you name. have done thank and you are still thank doing. You, Glory to your name. Glory. Amen. Amen. May you Amen. be encouraged by the word of God. Praise Amen. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Allow me to give you a little bit of background Amen. on the text that we have just read. It speaks of a time right after the birth of the born-again church of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As you know, the church was birthed on the day of Pentecost. In Acts chapter 2, you can read about that, how the disciples and those who were followers of Jesus, 120 people, including the Disciples were gathered in an upper room in Jerusalem. They were there in obedience to a command that Jesus had given to them. Amen. That they should 
go to an upper room and they should wait there for what Jesus called the promise of the Father, which is the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Ghost was about to come upon them. This would happen after the ascension of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so the day came. It was the day of Pentecost. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And something remarkable happened at the beginning of the church. The Bible said, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And that was the birth of the church that we are a part of, the born-again church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so when that happened in Jerusalem, the Bible says that those who were in Jerusalem at the time some heard of it. Amen. And uh, they were alarmed as to what had happened. Many were confused. And so Peter, who became head of the church at the time, the Bible said that he rose up and preached to them Jesus Christ. Shared with them that they're not drunk the way some had thought. But what was happening is that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel in Joel chapter 2, 28 to 32. Joel chapter 2, 28 to 32. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth blood and fire and pillars of smoke the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. Shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord hath said. And in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. And preach, Peter preached that great sermon. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that in Acts chapter 238, that the hearts of the people were moved. And they said to Peter and to the apostles, what must we do to be saved? What must we do to be saved? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And in Acts chapter 2, 41, 
Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Amen. And so we find the beginning of the church that I'm so glad to be a part of this morning. The born again church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. We're going to look at the text in a moment. But let us pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the birth of your church. We're so glad to be a part of it. And Lord, as Peter preached on that great day and 3,000 were baptized and received the Holy Ghost, God, I pray that with this message today, Lord, those who are viewing this broadcast, that you will touch their hearts and they too will ask, what must I do to be saved? And so Lord, on this great day, Save those you choose to save, Lord. Use me and use this message to touch the hearts of your people. Save souls, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. The main story of the text, Jaleel is the healing of the man by gate beautiful. Amen. Hallelujah. And so with this story this morning, I want you to find your place in it. Amen. The Bible records it that the healing of the man by gate beautiful. And so the individuals in this story involves Peter and John who were on their way to the temple to pray. And the Bible tells us, as our first lady read in Acts chapter 3, 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. Praise the Lord. And I want to begin by encouraging you to develop a life of prayer. If you will continue to serve the Lord and develop a life of prayer, God can use you. You can be like Peter and John in the text. Then there's another individual in the text. And it's the man who's lying by gate beautiful. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so God wants to use you in one of two ways. He wants to use you to help someone to rise up and walk. That's my theme today. Rise up and walk. Hallelujah. And you can be a Peter and a John. If you will develop a prayer life. A constant prayer life. If you will ask God to use you. You can be like Peter and John in this text. Or maybe you're like the man lying at gate beautiful, waiting, hallelujah, for someone to come and help you to rise up and walk. Praise God. Hallelujah. They were on their way to the temple. And throughout the, the New Testament, uh, we find the apostles constantly in prayer. They didn't do anything without prayer. Prayer prepares you to help people to rise up and walk. Amen? 
And there are so many today who have fallen. There's a commercial that I look at with deep meaning at times in a spiritual context. This woman has fallen in her home and she sends out an alarm. I'm falling and I can't get up. And I know that many today have fallen. You're at a place like the man by Gate Beautiful. You want to get up, but you cannot get up. The reason you can't get up, you see, you this kind of spiritual arising that I'm talking this morning, you cannot do it in your strength. It can only be done in the strength of the Lord. You see, it's not by might nor by power, amen, amen. but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the Bible says a certain man was lame from his mother's womb. This man, like Jaleel lying here today, was a paralytic. Amen. Uh, this man wanted to get up. Uh, by the end of the story, you see that the man really didn't want money. What he wanted to do was to get into the temple. Amen. That's really what he wanted. But people were they were giving him what he didn't need. And God is telling me to tell you that you need to, if you're going to help people to rise up and walk, you got to give them what they need. And it's not always money. Most of the time, it's not about your money. America, we're too quick to use money to solve all of our problems. And God has sent this COVID-19 to let us know that, that, that money cannot solve everything. Praise the name of the Lord. Because some have lost loved ones and they had all the money in the world, but they couldn't heal them. Praise God. And so here's this man lying by Gate Beautiful. The man had a condition and money could not take care of his condition. And his condition in scripture, he was lame from his mother's womb. Praise the Lord. David said in Psalm 51 and verse 5, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. We were born in sin. We are shaped in sin. Sin has made us lame. Say amen, somebody. But there's good news. Hallelujah. I said there's good news. You can rise up from that place of sin. You can have a second chance. Say amen, somebody. And listen, is there one righteous? I said, is there one righteous? I certainly not going to say I am. There is none, including me. Praise the name of the Lord. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But there's good news. God is able to meet you right where you are today. And in the name of Jesus Christ, you can rise up out of sin and begin to walk in holiness. Let's give the Lord a hand clap for that. For those who are willing, for those who are willing. Praise the Lord. So the man was lame. Praise God. And the Bible said he was carried. And sin will cause others to carry you. Amen? Praise the Lord. Sin will cause your natural God-given abilities to, be, to become a delinquent and dormant in your life. And so, don't you see, uh, oftentimes, uh, people, I know they've come to me, Pastor, please pray for me. And I'm saying to myself, can't you pray for yourself? Amen. 
some people, they don't know how to pray for themselves. They don't believe that if they pray that God is going to hear their prayers because a transformation, you see, needs to take place in their lives. They need to surrender to Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. So the man was lying there. And verse 3 says, who seeing Peter and John go into the temple, ask an arm. Amen. So it's as if Jalil is saying, can I have a dollar? Say it loud. Amen. The man ask an arm. Can I have a dollar? Hallelujah. And the Bible says, and Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. Look, Jaleel. Amen. Look on Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Look up again, Jaleel. Look up to Jesus. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And he gave heed unto them, amen, expecting to receive something from them. He gave heed unto them. So the, the Peter and John says, look on us. Look on us. Amen. 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 And, and let me just say that there are some things that no man can do for you. You're not going to get your breakthrough until you begin to look on Jesus like, like Jaleel looked up. Amen. Symbolizing looking unto Amen. Jesus. Amen? Amen? Peter and John were representing uh, Jesus Christ who had ascended into heaven. They were now his witnesses. Jesus had told them, Greater things will you do than me. And so by faith they said to the man, knowing that Jesus is able to operate in their lives, knowing that God's Holy Spirit had empowered them, they said to the man, look on us. The writer of Hebrews put it this way, says, look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of, of our faith. Amen. Praise God. Verse 5, and he gave heed unto them. This tells me that the, the man surrendered to them. Amen. He gave heed. He, it's as if the man was saying, whatever you choose to do, do it in me. Do it with me. And, and nothing you're not going to be able to rise up from where you are. Remember I said it's not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of God. Amen. You're not going to be able to rise up from where you are until you give heed to Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Until you surrender to him. Until you give your life to him. Until you tell him, take my life and let it be consecrated Lord to thee. Take my moments and my ways and let them flow in ceaseless amen. praise. Amen. Somebody say amen out there in live stream land this morning. In Facebook live land. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And he gave heed expecting to receive something. You see, one thing I love about the Christian faith, so different from many other faith that believes once you die, that's it. No, not in our faith. You can expect, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you can expect what Christ died for. He died that you might have life and life 
more abundantly. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So in order to rise up and walk, in order to rise up from there, you're going to have to expect God to do it. You're going to have ex you're going to have expectation of every promise that God has made in His Word. You see, some of you believe in Jesus, but you have no expectation from Him because you don't know what He has promised to do. Get in the into the temple. Get into the house. You see. This is what where this man's life was going to be changed. It's not the change they were giving him. It's the change that was going to happen when he entered into the temple. And Peter and John knew exactly what the man needed. It wasn't money. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And God is saying if you're going to help people to rise up and walk, know what they need. And what they need, number one, is Jesus Christ. Number two, they need the Holy Ghost. <laughs> number three, they need to get baptized. You do that for folks, they will rise up and walk. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So the man expected to receive something of them. Oh, I'm telling you today, without a doubt, you can expect good things from the Lord. Amen. Amen. You can expect good things because why? Our God is good. Praise the name of the Lord. And because he is good, he knows how to give good things to those who seek him, to those who serve him. Give him another hand clap in here today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. So Peter said, silver and gold have I not, but such as I have, give I thee. What did they have? They had faith. They had faith that God was able to pick this man up from his low place. Say amen, somebody. Amen. They had faith in the name of Jesus. And so they said to the man, as I'm going to say to Jaleel, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up, rise up. Rise up and walk in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Yes. There is power in the name of Jesus. And the man went where he wanted to go all along. In the temple of God. In the church. And there are some folks who want to come to church. But you're inviting them elsewhere. You're inviting them to go see a man. A, a special man. No. Invite them to church. Hallelujah. Invite them into the born again church. Of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You don't have to tell them who I am. Because I can't do anything for them. But you must tell them, hallelujah, about Jesus. Amen. And help them to find a born-again church where Jesus Christ, where his name is lifted up and where his name is preached. For there is no other name in heaven or in the earth whereby we are saved but by the name of Jesus. I'm sharing this message to let you know today. It doesn't matter where life has placed you. You can rise up in the name of Jesus. You can rise up and walk. Amen. He took the man like we exercised there. 
by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately. You see, our God is a God of immediacy. Today you can rise up and walk. I'm not talking about tomorrow. I'm not saying go see your doctor. I'm saying if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, hallelujah, and you put that faith in Jesus, immediately you can rise up. I don't care where you have fallen from. I don't care how hard you have fallen. You can rise up and walk. And this word is not just for you. It's also for me because there are times when I feel down. There are times when I feel as if I have failed. Praise the name of the Lord. But this word says in the name of Jesus Christ, you can rise up from there and you can move on into eternity. Praise the name of the Lord. Know where you're going. The Bible said the righteous man falls seven times. He gets up. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And he leaping stood up and walked and entered with them into the temple. Walking and leaping and praising God. Jaleel, come on, run around this place and let them see what God did for the lame man. Come on, hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Run around. You like to run around. Come on, run around this place. Run around. Come on, Jaleel, hands out the pocket. Run around. Run around. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and praise the Lord. Run around. Hallelujah. Let them see. Hallelujah. He's playing the part of the lame man. The lame man walked and leaped. Hallelujah. And praise God in the temple. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And all the people saw him. All the people. Amen. God wants to use you. Either like Peter and John. To help people to rise up and walk. Or he wants your life to be a testimony. Like the man who was lying at Gate Beautiful. He no longer needed to lay there. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible said the man leaped and ran into the temple, praising God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The man was no longer there. The man got where he wanted to go all along. Amen. The man entered into the house of God, leaping, walking and leaping and praising God. And the Bible says, and all the people saw him walking and praising God. The man's life became a testimony. Say amen, somebody. And when God picks you up, you are going to be able to help others rise up and walk. Because when they ask you, hallelujah, the, you, first they will know and they will ask you, say amen somebody, amen, amen. who did that for you? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord, hallelujah, which they did ask the man eventually. They asked the man, you know, who did that uh, for you? Bible says, and they knew that it was he which sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened to him. Amen. Your life will amaze people. Amen. If you will put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and allow Jesus Christ to pick you up from where you are. Amen. 
your life will be turned around in such a way people will be amazed. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they too will ask you, who did this? Amen. Who did this? Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The man replied, Jesus. Jesus. Amen. The man's Jesus. life was a testimony that Jesus was the one who had healed him. Amen. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's greatly wondering. Amen. Amen. And when and when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, You men of Israel, why marvel you at this? Why look ye so earnestly unto us, as though by our power or holiness we made this man to walk? The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so it's in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. that this man was able to rise up and walk. Amen. And the man's life became a testimony. Amen. People were saved because of what they saw Amen. and heard that day. Amen. The man's life became Peter's next sermon. As to who Jesus is. Amen, amen. And your life, God is getting to let your life amount to, 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 yes, to, yes. to much more than it is right now. Amen. If by faith in Jesus' name, you will rise up and walk. Amen. Let me tell you, there is power yes. in the name of Jesus. <laughs> amen. There is power in the name of Jesus. I close with Colossians 3.17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ, giving Amen. thanks to God and the Father by him. And also Philippians 2.10, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth. Amen. And that every tongue shall confess Amen. that Jesus Christ Amen. is Lord Amen. to the glory of God. Amen. Your life will allow people, if you would allow God to pick you up, people will marvel and people will come to know that there is no other name that can cause them to rise again Amen. but the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior because of where God is going to take you from and take you, people will be able to confess Jesus is the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah Amen. to the glory of God. Amen. Rise up and walk. Amen. Amen. Look at where COVID-19 has placed you. Look where the economy has placed you. You're, you're, you're waiting for your stimulus check. You're on unemployment. Amen. Hallelujah. You're, 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 you're behind in your rent. Your food is running out. The money that you have saved is running out. See it not as a situation to push you down further, but an, an opportunity for God to cause you to rise up from there. But that must take place in the heart. Because you can get the check and still don't rise up. Amen. You can get another job and still don't rise amen. up. Say amen, amen, somebody. Amen. The economy can turn around, but you still don't rise up. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Amen. Father in heaven, we give you thanks for your word today. It's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Lord, from this 
Bible story today, we have learned how much you can use us to help others to rise up and walk. We have learned that if we look unto Jesus, God, and we cry out to you, Lord Jesus, and we accept you as Lord and Savior, and we pray, God, raise me up. God, lift me up. We can rise again. I pray that this service today, this message has touched someone's heart, someone who's feeling down, someone who feels as if the curtain has been drawn on their lives, someone who's wondering, how will I bounce back? Let them know that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, there is a way up and there's a way out in Jesus' name. Thank you for participating in our worship service today. I pray that you have been blessed by the uh, message that I shared with you today. Praise God. Rise up and walk. God wants you to get up from there. God wants you to move into your future. God wants you to move towards uh, heaven, actually, that it's going to begin with you rising up and walking into all the promises of God. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, we look forward for you joining in next Sunday morning at 10 a.m. I want to encourage you, if you have been blessed, tell others about this broadcast coming out of Spring of Water Christian Assembly, located at 374 North Main Street in Randolph, Massachusetts. In a few weeks, we're going to be opening the doors of the church to the public, and we look forward to seeing you. If you have been blessed, if this is the kind of preaching that you've been praying to God about, then we invite you to come and worship with us. In the meantime, continue to join us virtually. God bless you and have a great rest of your day. Then shout hallelujah, shout praise the Lord. We hope you'll worship with us again next week right here on live stream at 10 a.m. Spring of Water, changing lives for the better.